see we have seen the calculation of allylic frequency for a gene locus which is represented by two alleles but there may be cases when a single gene locus may be represented by more than two alleles so through this presentation i am going to explain gene and genotype frequency calculation for a multiple allelic locus and this i am going to explain in case of abo blood group system we know that uh, our entire human population can be categorized into four types a b ab and o so suppose you have collected data from a population and you found that 60 individuals out of 200 are of blood group a 40 individuals are of blood group b 15 are of blood group ab and 85 are of blood group o so you simply uh, considered randomly 200 individuals and by using antibodies a and b you uh, came to know about their blood group and the number is given here now your purpose is your aim is to calculate the frequency of uh, ia ib and io alleles in this population because we know that this abo blood group system is determined by three alleles that is ia ib and io and you also know that ia shows co dominance with ib that is both alleles have capability to express if they are present in the same individual whereas ia and ib both are dominant over io so with this knowledge you can uh, calculate the frequency of ia ib and io and i have given here certain steps to calculate the frequency of these three alleles but let us see how this will be done first of all we will find out the frequency of uh, these four different group blood groups in the population so what is there 60 individuals out of 200 its frequency will be 0.30 it means the number of a individuals their frequency in the population is 0.3 then 40 divided by 200 that will come 0.2 then 15 divided by 200 this frequency will come 0.08 and then 85 out of 200 this will come 0.42 when you will add up these four values the value final value has to come one so total will be coming one so this is first step if you have this kind of data you will find out the frequency of these four types then ia this particular allele is represented by p this will be represented by p ib suppose its frequency is q and then io its frequency is r so p q and r indicate the uh, frequency of ia ib and io respectively then we know that those individuals whose blood group is a they will be genotypically ia ia or ia io it means they could be homozygous homozygous if they have genotype ia ia and they could be heterozygous we do not know the genotype of these individuals simply we can say that these 60 individuals could be homozygous heterozygous they will be a mixture of such you know genotype likewise those individuals whose blood group is b they will be genotypically ib ib or ib io those whose blood group is ab they will be genotypically ia ib and individuals of o blood group their genotype will be io io so what we can say that this p q and r which represent the frequency of these three alleles this p plus q plus r if you have its binomial expansion then it will give you p square 
plus 2PR plus QV square plus 2QR plus 2PQ plus R square. So this will be expansion of P plus Q plus R its square. Now you can put these genotypic values in the real genotype. See here, those individuals who are a blood uh, genotype IAIA, they are actually P square. Those who are heterozygotes, they will be represented as 2PR because P stands for IA and R stands for O. So the heterozygotes will be represented as 2PR. So you have considered P square and 2PR for those whose blood group is A. Then individuals with B blood group, genotypically they are IB, IB, they can be represented as Q square. And uh, heterozygotes, they will be 2QR. Now, those individuals whose blood group is AB, genotypically they are IAIB, and they will be represented by 2PQ, because P stands for IA and Q stands for IB. And uh, individuals with blood group O, genotypically they are IOIO, and they will be represented with respect to frequency as R square. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, all these 6 different kinds of genotype will be represented by this frequency. After knowing this much, you can go in the next step. Here again I am repeating the same thing, this uh, you know, row shows the uh, number of individuals of uh, respective blood group. Their frequency which you have just calculated that is given here. Then I am showing here P squared 2 PR that represents, uh, you know, means 0 0.30 is uh, the frequency for P square and 2 PR. Then Q squared 2 QR its frequency is 0 0.20. 2PQ, its frequency in the population 0.08. R square, its frequency is 0.42. Now, what you have to see here, uh, this is actually most important step you should remember because if you could uh, understand this step, then uh, the entire calculation you will understand very easily. We know that P plus R, its square, P means that represents IA, R means IO. So P plus R its square will be P square plus 2PR plus R square. And P square 2PR, this P square 2PR, its frequency is 0 0.30. So P square plus 2PR and R square. R square means its frequency is 0.42. So here I have simply written here the frequency of P square 2 PR that is 0 0.30 and frequency of R square that is 0 0.42. Once again I am repeating the same thing. P square plus 2 PR this much is being represented by 30 means this 0 0.30 and R square it is being taken here as 0.42. Total of 0 0.30, 0 0.42, it will be coming 0.72. So you can say that P plus R square is equal to 0.72. And if you want to know P plus R this value, then this will be square root of 0.72. So P plus R that will be equal to square root of 0.72 and this value comes 0 0.85. So now you have got the value P plus R that is 0.85. R square, here you see this R square, its value is 0 0.42. So if R square is equal to 0 0.42, then R will be equal to square root of 0 0.42 and this value will come 0 0.65. So if you have P plus R 0.85 and you come to know the value of R that has come 0.65, then you can know the value of P. So P will be equal to 0.85.
this value minus 0.65 and that comes 0.20. So finally you have come to know the value of uh, P that has come 0 0.20. Then value of R it has come 0 0.65 and P plus Q plus R will have to be equal to 1. P value that has already been calculated that is 0 0.20 Q 0.65 then I'm sorry R is equal to 0.65 then this Q will be equal to 0.15 because the total of these three will have to be 1. So by using these steps you can know the frequency of IA, IB and IO alleles or you can say that you can know the frequency P, Q and R. Then here you can see that, uh, okay, again I am writing here IA that is equal to P and its frequency has come 20%. IB which is represented by Q, its frequency has come 15% and then IO which is being represented by R, its frequency has come 65%. Total will be, you know, 1%. If you add up these values, total has to come 1. Now you can also calculate the expected number because so far you have observed number of individuals in the population. And based on such, you know, IA, IO and uh, IB frequency, you can calculate the expected number. So let us see how this expected number will be obtained. Uh, because this is another important step uh, to know the expected number of different genotypes, also, sorry, different, you know, phenotypes. So what you will do, P square plus 2PR into N, that will give you expected number of A types. Then Q square plus 2QR into N will give you the expected number of B or B phenotype. Then 2PQ into N, N stands for total number of individual observed and that is 200. That will give you the expected number for AB and R square into N, that will give the expected number for O. So I have done this calculation. What I have done, I have simply put the values over here. That is 0 0.20 its square plus 2 into 0.2 into 0.65 and whatever product came that uh, has been multiplied with 200 and this value has come 60. So you have observed 60 individuals in the population and uh, by this calculation exactly the same number is also expected. Here if you calculate the expected value for B types then it will be coming 43.50. If you calculate expected number for AB, then this number will be coming 12. And for O, this number has come 84.50. So now you have observed number of individuals. And by adopting all such methods, you have got the expected number of individuals. Then the next step will be to see whether this population is in equilibrium or not with respect to a bio blood group system and for that you will be calculating chi square you will see whether the observed and expected values are significantly different from each other or they show much closeness if they show much closeness then you will accept that this population is in hardy winberg equilibrium and if you find significant difference then you will consider that this population is not in equilibrium, at least this ABO blood group locus is not in equilibrium. So here what I am seeing, although I have not done further calculations, but uh, what I am observing that here in the first case, the observed expected values are very close. In this case, also the values are very close. Uh, so I feel that this population will be in equilibrium. But since you know how to calculate uh, a chi-square and how to interpret the data, uh, I hope that you will be able to do 
further analysis. But in this, uh, you know, uh, presentation, I have mainly tried to explain calculation of allylic frequency in uh, ABO blood group system and how you can calculate the expected number of individual for these four different blood group types.